I want to welcome uh, Claudio, who we have here joining us from Kong, and he'll be walking through this lab, um, and you'll be able to follow along and also ask questions uh, throughout the session. So do make sure you join the chat room. And um, I guess without further ado, we will uh, bring him on and go ahead and uh, kick things off. So welcome, Claudio, and thanks for joining. Thanks so very much, Aaron. Yeah, again, my name is Claudio Covivam. I'm a solution architect here at Kong. As a matter of fact, I've been working uh, here at Kong for almost three years now. A member of the license team uh, responsible for, you know, very um, uh, partnerships and license. Like, for instance, Okta is one of the most important ones uh, I've been working with. Um, that's it. It's a pleasure talking to you guys. So um, for today, I have prepared a... Um, a workshop, of course, exploring these uh, con connect enterprise and not the integration points. As a matter of fact, we're going to explore four for them the most, I would say, the four most common use cases when we come to these integration con connect enterprise and Octa. Before um, going through the use cases, I like to um, I put, put together, together some slides and then I like to go through it. it through them in order to show you how the, uh, the topology looks like, you know, the typical topology uh, looks like, you know, the with the API gate in Okta Ident Provider. So um, here's a very basic topology where we have the uh, the Kong Connect Enterprise API gate in Okta working together, of course. But then you can, as you can see, the API gate has been split up in two sub layers up here. We got the control plane. The control plane responsible for the uh, admin tasks. So every time we need to create a new API to define a policy, change a policy, existing policy, you go, you as an admin, you go to the, the control plane and then do your job. And then the control plane responsible for publishing the APIs and policies across the, the multiple data planes you might have in your uh, deployment. So for instance, in, in this simple diagram, you can see I got two data planes running, uh, the first one running my local machine. And the second one, you can have a, uh, the second data plane running as an EC2 instance in AWS, for instance. So again, every time I create a new API, this API is gonna be published in these two data planes and then the consumers will be able to send requests to the, to the data plane and then go some the API and, and then any upstream you might have behind it. Um, you know, your microservices, your services, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the, the topology is pretty straightforward, but then again, you know, security is one of the, I would say, the most important policy you should uh, enable to your APIs. And then in this sense, you're going to have these uh, slightly uh, loosely coupled uh, integration with Okta and the provider, provider to implement, implement open and connect uh, based authentication processes. As a matter of fact, both uh, products, Kong and Okta, implement, uh, you know, uh, fully implement the open and connect standards. All the grants, as a matter of fact, the four of them, uh, client credentials, authorization code, password, implicit. I'm going to show you the two main ones. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, the, the document I'm going to share with you guys uh, in a moment, I'm going to describe how to implement two, the two, two main ones, client credentials and authorization code, of course, using Okta as the identity provider. That's it. Um, so before we get started, um, just to show you my demo environment here, I hope was able to, to register to Kong. Uh, uh, connect uh, cloud, uh, cloud and then, and then the, the uh, uh, control plane instance, instance for you. So, so here's my, I can log out and start it over. So then you should go to connect.conghq.com. You're going to see this login page and then just a matter to uh, use your credentials. And then you're going to get, uh, you're going to see your control plane. So the control plane, there's nothing here. The control plane is running in our cloud, in our cloud, 
uh, it's a trial control plane, 30 day control plane. The same thing applies to, to Okta control plane. So again, let me log out and then starting over. So I have registered myself first and then used my, uh, my, oops. Again, for Octa, Octa's uh, control. Oh, oops. Too many passwords. No, I think I got it. So both control planes are there. Again, connect API Gateway and Octa. And then here's the document. I think Aaron has shared the link with you guys. The document I put together. Uh, again, I'm going through the document in a moment. But then again, just a summary of the document, the structure of the, docu the document for you guys. So kind of, you know, again, we got this executive summary, first of all, like, you know, describing the, um, um, the, the integration, the, the Kong, inter Kong Connect Enterprise, API Gate and Okta. Like, you know, again, the same topology here. And then the document describes how, first of all, how to define an API using Connect Control Plane. And then later on, we're going to explore four, as I said, four use cases. The first, the first two ones, we're going to explore uh, two um, OPA Connect, Connect grants. The Client Credential, Credential grants, very, very, very important if you're implementing a application authentication process. And the second one, the authorization code, if you're going to implement user authentication process. Introspection, that's the third use case. Very, very important to have these token validation at the API request processing time. So every time the API gateway receives an uh, API request, the API gateway will be responsible for connecting to Okta uh, identity provider to make sure the token issued by Okta previously is still, is still valid. So it's not just a matter to validate the JWT signature and uh, check the claims inside of it, but but most importantly, to, to make sure Okta still considers the uh, the token is a valid one. And the, the last use case, I'm going uh, to, uh, you're going to implement a access control that happens after the authentication uh, related to authorization, of course. And then I'm going to use Okta's uh, uh, group and claims uh, notions to implement this access control policy. Very, very basic. Like, you know, for instance, you're going to present your JWT, but because you don't belong to a specific Okta group, you won't be able to consume the API. So that's it. Four use cases. Um, the two first one for authentication, the third for token validation, and the fourth for authorization, access control, if you will. So I'm going through, um, I'm going to show you how to, uh, first of all, what I got, only the two, the, the, the two control planes, Kong control plane and Okta control plane. So I'm going to show you how to instantiate the very first data plane in order to, uh, to send requests to the API and then consume the APIs. So um, again, here's the, uh, the, uh, the first chapter of the document. So uh, very, very important. Oh, uh, there's another comment over here. Very, very important. I have described how to do, uh, how to uh, create data planes and um, APIs using both CLI and the Connect CLI and Connect GUI. So exactly the same process. You can see exactly the same process being described using CLIs, our CLI, or our GUI. Exactly the same thing. How to create an API using CLI and how to create exactly the same API using the GUI. 
So, but first of all, I don't have any data plane. Let's create an, our data plane. So if you go to the, um, your, your terminal and run this command over here, you're gonna get a connect um, session. I'm using, of course, I'm using exactly the same credentials I use for the control plane. Is my password, and that's my trio control plane. So that's okay to share my password with you guys. So then again, if I run this command over here, using my terminal, I'm gonna get this connect uh, session. So this cookie over here is very, very important. So if you're going to use CLIs to do your job, to create APIs, to define policies, OPI and connect policies and so on and so forth, these cookies over here is very, very important. That's the cookie you use to refer to your session previously uh, um, created by the control plane. Again, I just got this, this session over here. I'm gonna copy this command, the whole thing. Just make sure I got the cookie with me. So again, this cookie is important. I'm going to highlight this. Oops. Uh, I'm going to highlight this because I'm going to use it later on. And then just to make sure my control plane is all right, that would be um, nice to run this command over here just to get my control plane settings. So again, as I said before, we, we're gonna use the, co the cookie we got when we open our session. So let's copy this cookie over here. Injecting my command. and run the command and send a request to the control plane. And then the control plane is going, is going to, to tell me uh, the main control plane settings. So the most important uh, information we got of, of here is the ID, that's the control plane ID. So every, every time you want to refer to your control plane, you should use this ID over here. So kind of, you know, uh, this output is here just saying like, you know, uh, the uh, your control plane is a trial one. Here's the um, executable URI, the telemetric endpoint and so on and so forth. So kind of, you know, um, settings that you can use along the way while interacting with your control plane. Then again, the most important one, that's the ID over here. So let me copy this again. Just make sure I got everything I need. More precisely, the uh, my control plane ID. So again, let me copy this. And save the ID up here. Highlighting it again. Just make sure I got the the right control plane ID. And now, uh, just we just you know uh, ran some you know um, uh, some send some requests. Just to make sure the control plane the control plane is it's up and running. It's, everything is fine now. Now it's it's time to create our very first uh, data plane. So if you go to the the control plane, you're gonna see this runtime option up here. So now you can see uh, all my data planes instances I got this time. I have instantiated uh, three data planes so far. We're gonna instantiate the fourth instance. If we click on this configure uh, runtime, you're gonna see this um, uh, Unix script over here. Um, before we copying it and running it, uh, I like to, to uh, to say that you know uh, the the Docker based runtime just a uh, one flavor of the data plane you might have. 
So as you can see over here, you can instantiate other runtimes, other data planes, if you will, for regular uh, Linux operating system or even for Kubernetes. So uh, as you can see right now, we provide support for three kinds of uh, data planes. Again, Docker, Linux, and Kubernetes. So here's the, uh, you know, the specific settings for if you want to run your data plane in a Kubernetes cluster. All these data planes, of course, again, they will be connected to my control plane. So to make my life easier, just for this demo or work, workshop, we're going to instantiate the, the simplest one, the Docker-based runtime, the Docker-based data plane. So I'm going to copy this command over here. I'm going to save it. because I'm going to run it later on. Then again, I'm going to use my, I'm going to change this field over here with my control plane admin password. Before we run it, just wanted to show you my doc, my local Docker environment. This port portainer. I got Docker desktop installed in my Mac OS. This is a, I just got the portainer in here. Nothing more than that. No containers, no images, no volumes, no nothing. And then I'm going to run the script we copied before. So the script is going to the control plane, not just to uh, authenticate it, to for authentication, but actually to pull the Docker image, look, and then install the image and instantiate the container for us. You should be okay. If you go back to Portainer one more time, you should see a, a brand new container up and running now. And as you can see, the container is based on this image over here, which is the uh, uh, data plane in instant uh, image you're using. The images over here. More than that, as you can see, the, the default ports we uh, use for the data plane are the port 8000. So if you go to port 8000, localhost, if you will, HTTP, localhost, Port 8000, you're going to hit the data plane, the local data plane, running your local laptop. So again, the control plane is running in our cloud. The data plane is running your local laptop. The message is here saying that, you know, no route matches uh, with those values because, you know, we don't have any API defined in, in, the, in the control plane. That's why I'm receiving this, this message over here. So let's go to the control plane now to create a new, the, our very first API. So we go to service over here. Again, there's nothing here. We're going, we, we're getting started. And then first of all, we need to create a new service. Let's call it service one, just a name. Could be anything. And then this service is gonna have a version. Let's call it version one. That's it. And then the versions here, you can have multiple versions for the same service, if you will. And then we click on the version one we just created. There's a new implementation button over here. We click on it. That's the most important settings for the service. As a matter of fact, a Kong service, consider a Kong service a, an abstraction for the name point, your upstream uh, is uh, exposing right now. So again, this URL here could be um, an um, endpoint exposed by you know a Java application server, could be a legacy system, could be a Kubernetes cluster, could be a load balancer, whatever. In, in theory, any up, any upstream uh, you might have in your um, environment here. For these uh, workshop purpose. Um, I'm going to use the uh, 
the public httpbean.org service. Not sure if you guys know the service, kind of, you know, it's just a echoing, echo service. If you hit it directly, you're going to see uh, this page over here, and then you can send re um, any request, like, you know, again, it's an echo service, it's a public echo service, and then, you know, just pretending these echo services my upstream, just using it to create my, uh, my service over here. You can define your service or implementation, you know, not just with the URI, but, you know, the number of retries, you, the API gateway, the data plane will try um, to, uh, to connect to these upstream before considering um, not available. The connection timeout, the writing timeout, client certificates, if the, connect, the connection requires a mutual TLS tunnel, that will be the case to include your client certificates. Of course, the data plane will, will play the client role in the mutual TLS tunnel and so on. And then that's it. The, the second part of your API definition is where you define the public part of your API. So define the path. So the service, we're gonna expose the service through this very basic path. Like, you know, let's call it path one, whatever. Just another name again. And then you click on create. And then you got your API defined. So just a review, the service is based on this upstream over here, the http.bin, httpbin.org upstream. And then this service is being exposed to the uh, API consumers through this path over here, slash path one. So we just finished our job in the control plane. And then, as I said before, the control plane responsible for publishing this API definition to the data plane running my local machine. As a matter of fact, if you go back to our data plane and try to consume the path one now, we're going to get the uh, HTTP, HTTP bin.org results. As a matter of fact, I can send any, you know, any HTTP bin uh, org uh, verb, like, you know, get or UUID, so on. Sounds good. So, uh, and then again, the API gate is the data plane, as a matter of fact, is sitting in the middle. Um, I got the API consumer, which is the HTTP PI sending request to API gateway, and the gateway is just routing the requests uh, to the upstream, in my case, httpbn.org. So, um, but, you know, again, I am I'm able to send as many requests as I want. Nobody is preventing me. Nobody is controlling this exposure. So that will be the case to implement policies to these routes, this route I just created. And then that will be the case to inject open and connect based authentication processes. So in this sense, the consumer should send credentials to the API gateway to, and then the API gateway should uh, work with the Okta this time to make sure the credentials is fine. And more than that, if it's able to consume the API. So yeah, let's move on and apply the open and connect uh, policy to the right with, to, to the route we just created. Just a, I know another comments over here. We can explore the specific data plane capabilities, like you know the number of requests the data plane has been um, has processed so far. The number you know the the not just the number of requests, but you know the stat, status codes for each one of these requests and so on. So again, let's take this route over here and enable the OpenID Connect um, uh, policy to it. So how we do that? We use the this time. That's the time to use the Kong uh, Connect plugins. As a matter of fact, if you go to the route we just created and click on this Add Plugin button over here, you're gonna see a extensive list of plugins 
Kong provides in order to implement to define all sorts of policies. For instance, for authentication-based uh, policies, we provide extensive lists like you new know, to implement base authentication. API keys, the regular mechanisms we, we usually have in the API gateways for authentication. Base authentication, API keys, mutual TLS, very, very important. OPID Connect, that's the one we're going to use. LDAP-based, if you want to implement the LDAP-based authentication process, of course, and so on. The same thing, we provide other plugins to implement security-based policies. Like, you know, OPA. That's the based on this open policy agent, like you know, to implement access control policies. And then we got traffic control pl uh, plugins to implement, you know, canary releases, to implement mocking, if you will, add the API gateway layer, to implement caching, add the API gateway layer again, to integrate with your GraphQL servers, to implement rate limiting policies, um, to, um, to implement. Um, you know, policies like, you know, um, to, to, to limit the, the, the responses coming from the, uh, the upstreams and so on. We, pro we also provide serverless plugins in order to integrate the server, well-known serverless infrastructures like AWS Lambda, Azure Functions, and so on. Analytics-based um, uh, plugins to implement integration with Datadog, Prometheus, Zipkins for tracing, transformations policies, very, very important to transform requests, for instance, to transform requests before sending requests to the upstreams, to transform responses before getting back to the consumers, to uh, enable gRPC protocols, to transform uh, REST requests into GraphQL requests, to transform re uh, REST requests into Kafka requests and then publishing, publish events to a, a given existing Kafka topic and so on. Last but not least, also um, plugins to implement all sort of logging processing um, based on files, based on StatsD. Uh, Kafka again, I'm using Kafka this time as my log processing infrastructure. TCP, uh, data stream based. Um, OD, UDP, and so on. So here's the uh, you know the extensive list of plugins we provide in Kong uh, Connect Enterprise. So for this workshop, we're gonna use again. We're gonna use the OpenD Connect uh, plugin. So again, if we click, let's go back. Let's starting over. Like you know, again, is our service. The service has got only one version. The version is got uh, one route defined, and then for this route, we're gonna apply the OpenID Connect plugin. This is the OpenID Connect plugin, and then if you go through this page over here, you're gonna see extensive list of parameters. You uh, you might want to uh, to set in order to implement, you know, all kinds of grants, all grant, all OpenID Connect grants with Okta. For specifically for the client credentials grant, and then that will be my first use case. Client credentials. I'm gonna use the uh, Okta application I created previously. So let's go to the Okta data pl uh, control plane now. Is the two applications I had created previously. I'm going to use this one, the con client credentials. The most important uh, parameters, of course, are cli client ID and client secrets. I'm going to use these guys over here to set my OpenID Connect plugin in my Kong API gateway. So if you go to document again, you're going to see how to do these, uh, how to set the client credentials, how to set the OpenID Connect plugin to implement the client credentials flow. Again, I'm going through, you know, step by step how to create the Okta application. 
and then you know how to set uh, all the all the, um, the the important settings to implement the, the client credentials again. And then once you got the Okta uh, application in place, that will be the case to go to connect again to set the OpenID Connect plugin. For the, again, for the client credentials grant, we're going to set these is only four client uh, settings for the OpenID Connect plugin. The client ID, the client secret, the issuer endpoint, and scope. And here's how, to, how you can do it using both CLI, if you will, or the GUI. You click on Add Plugin, just like I did. You click on the OpenID Connect plugin, and then you go to the, uh, the panel, the OpenID Connect uh, panel to define the, uh, the specific settings for us to implement again, to implement the client conditions. So just to make sure I'm using the right IDs and secrets, I don't think so. Let me uh, let me update this. You are supposed to use yours, of course, but then it's gonna be mine. Okay, so uh, we're gonna again we're gonna um, configure our OpenID Connect plugin with these specific settings over here. So the client ID first. So let's go to the um, con, 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 control plane again. I look for client ID. Client, uh, client ID is client ID. Paste it. And then we go and set the, uh, the secret. And then we set the secret. Oops. The secret is, is down here. And then we set the issuer. That's my issuer. You're gonna you're gonna have yours. Let's look for the issuer. And then finally the scope. I, if you will, if you want to set a time to live caching for the API gateway, so I kind of, you know, the API gateway is going to keep all the information coming from the Okta for 10 seconds only. That's, you know, nice for testing environments. Of course, for production ready environments, that will be a totally different settings. But then again, you can, if you will, you can set this caching over here just to, to instruct the API gateway to keep this information coming from the uh, Okta. I didn't provide it for 10 seconds only. So I'm gonna leave it as this, and then just a matter to click to go down there. We are good now and click on create. And then you go, we're gonna see the route over here again. If we click the route, this time we're gonna see the OpenID Connect enabled to it. So if we try to consume if you go back to the consumer and try to consume the path one route, exactly the same route we created before, we're gonna get an error. Meaning that you know we are supposed to provide our credentials in order to consume the API. So the um, the open the connect plugin supports this authentication uh, mechanism. Dash A means that, you know, you're going to, uh, uh, to present your credentials. Again, the client ID and client secrets in your request over here. So if you, if you uh, type dash A means that, you know, you're going to, to present the client ID. Again, here's my client ID.
column in your client secret. And then we should be able to, con to consume the API now. Oops, what, should, what, what have I done? Unauthorized, why is that? Have I copied correctly? X. Yeah, there you go. So uh, now I'm able to consume the API because you know I have presented my correct credentials this time. So of course, if I present the wrong credentials, I'm supposed to uh, to get in a 401 error code, meaning I'm not authorized to consume the API. So what what what's happening now? So you are sending a request to the data plane with your credentials injected inside of it. The data plane is going to the doctor making sure the uh, the credentials is it's fine. They're okay with that. Okta is saying, yes, the credentials are fine. The client ID and client secret are fine. More than that, uh, Okta is issuing a uh, 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 OpenID Connect, a JWT token for us. And then you, you can take it for there. So kind of, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to use your JWT token for other purposes. So, but more important than this, you know, we are able to consume the API using the client credential uh, grants. So, um, yeah, that's it. So that's client credentials uh, flow. Again, if you go back to the document over here, it's going to show how to uh, to consume the API gateway, the the API sending API request to the API gateway using your client credentials. And then again, the gate, the, the Okta is supposed to, to, to issue a token for us. If you copy the, this token and go to um, sites like jwt.io, for instance, you can see, you can decode the JWT token issued by Okta for us. So kind of the three parts of the JWT, header, the payload, and the signature over here. So I think that's it. So uh, any questions so far? So, uh, and then that would be the case for you guys to try by yourselves um, how, you know, first of all, how to instantiate a, a data plane using your Docker, whatever they are, your Docker um, uh, infrastructure. It could be a local laptop. It could be, you know, a Docker uh, environment running in the cloud, in the service, in the, in the VM, the cloud, and so on. So then again, that will be the case, like, you know, to, to uh, you to uh, you as ex exercising how to instantiate a data plane. More than that, how to create an API and apply the OpenID Connect in order to get this Okta integration in place. So um, that will be it. I think um, I'm going to pause now, and then I'll be here. If you have any questions going through the document or any questions regarding any, any other uh, grants or policy uh, I have described in the document over here. That's great, Claudio. Thanks. Um, I do see there was one question in here. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, coming from Matthew. Hey, yeah. Matthew, thanks so much for that. Is there a way to use keys in Kong rather than always calling introspecting points? Not sure I understand this one. When you say keys, you mean API keys? I think I understand the question. I think the question is rather than having the gateway need to always call out to Okta to validate access tokens, can it validate the JSON web token using the uh, Okta's public keys? 
Yes, you, you can. The introspection flow, as a matter of fact, is just a uh, you know just to make sure that you know because you know during during the uh, the uh, JWT token issuing time and the API request time, a lot of things might happen, and then you know that will be the case. Uh, the API gateway again, it's uh, you know it's part of the token validation process. And then the API gate is making sure the token is still valid. You know, nothing has happened to invalid, you know, to, to, to make this token invalid. So kind of, you know, again, uh, the, the gateway is requesting, is asking the uh, identity of Octus the, um, in our case. And then, you know, uh, asking like, you know, hey, Octa, this token over here is still a valid one. And then uh, Octa is going to say yes or no. The gateway is going to follow the Octa's decision. If it's good for Octa, it's good for the API gateway. That's the introspection flow uh, is all about. Like, you know, again, just to make sure the, the tokens um, is still valid, uh, you know, at the API request time. That's the most important thing, at the API request time. So, um, of course, you can inject other uh, credentials along the JWT token. Like you know, API keys and and again any other credentials, and uh, and and then again the API gateway will be responsible for checking all the credentials, not just the JWT coming from the identity provider. So again, if the API gate the API key is valid or not, and so on and so forth, kind of you know, that's that's the that's the uh, the most important uh, one of the most important reasons we use the API gateway, like you know, to make sure the uh, the request. Is um, is trustworthy to be routed to the upstreams. So, kind of, you know, again, uh, the API gateway can uh, use any sort of authentication mechanisms, like you know, API keys, uh, JWTs, introspections, if you will, and so on and so forth, to make sure the requests, the requests are, you know, totally um, uh, reliable, is reliable to be to get routed to the upstream. That's the point. Not sure if you answer your question now, but uh, yeah, I yeah, guess the question is, um, I guess the question is, are there options for how it decides to validate the token, um, rather than relying only on actually making an HTTP call to Okta? So, for oh, example, yeah. the you know because Okta's access tokens are um, they are JSON Web tokens, so yeah we have the option of doing the local validation of just using the public key that Okta provides. Yeah. Doing the validation. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. Not making an HTTP call. Yeah, let me share my screen again. Great. Again, there are the API gateway provides other plugins in order to to take care of this validation process. Again, introspection. You are totally right. Introspection, like you know, requires a uh, full connection with the identity provider. Not exactly a full connection, because you know, uh, from our side, we implement a caching mechanism to uh, to cache all the information coming from the Octave. Uh, I didn't provide it, and then this sends the API gateway not necessarily is going um, to the Octa and then provide it to make sure the uh, the token is valid and so on and so forth. So kind of you know, the introspection, yes, again, introspection implements a, uh, from our side, a caching mechanism in order to, again, otherwise that will be very, very um, uh, critical to have Octa, um, you know, um, uh, implementing exactly the same service level we got in API Gateway. Keep in mind, API Gateway is supposed to receive a massive amount of requests that will be very, very difficult to have the identity provider uh, to respond for you know, the, exactly the same amount of requests the API Gateway is, is processing in a given moment. That's why it's very, very important to, to implement this caching mechanism from our side. Other than this, we provide other plugins, as you can see over here. There's a specific JWT plugin. 
usually is used usually is used along with the OpenID Connect plugin to implement other validation uh, steps. For instance, let's say before going through this introspection flow, you want to make sure the signature um, of your JWT token, uh, the JWT token has been issued by um, uh, a data provider uh, trusted by you. That would be the case to, uh, to validate the signature of the JWT token. So the JWT, JWT, JWT plugin is able to do it. So kind of, you know, in this sense, that will be the local port, not depending on the external identity provider to validate the token. So kind of, again, really depends on the use case. I would say like, you know, for the most cases, for the most cases, we going to have the JWT token being used along with the OpenID Connect token, OpenID Connect plugin, I'm sorry to implement this validation process. Some steps will be um, done locally by the API gateway only. Some other steps, again, the introspection step will be uh, done by both the gateway and the, the Okta and the provider. Make sense? I think that makes sense. For instance, there's another plugin here. You can resign the token you have received, the gateway has received from the uh, external consumers and so on. So yeah, it's totally valid question. It's totally important. As a matter of fact, it's a very important question. Like, you know, to combine these plugins in order to implement the, um, you know, the required authentication process or validation process, if you will. So... I don't think we would want introspect to be cached because the reason to call would be to always get. Yes, absolutely. I fully agree with you. If you don't want to implement caching for the introspection, it's totally fine. The only comment I got for this, um, for, for this is that, you know, you should keep in mind that, you know, for each one of the requests, you're going to send the API gateway. The gateway is going to send another request to the identity provider back there. So kind of you know, something to keep in mind. I fully agree with you. Some cases you don't want to cache. Other use cases you will have to, to implement a caching and so on and so forth. Caching is good, but you know you have to deal with the, you know, the side effects of it, right? So that's why you know the caching provides time to live settings and so on and so forth. So um, that's it. Oh, yeah, there's another question here. Need the scope of Open and Connect. For the client credentials, no. You know, you need another, another, uh, not necessarily. That's the point. Not necessarily the Open and Connect scope. I have defined a scope one here. You know, just a, uh, uh, you know, just an example. Could be any other one. Oh, we lost, lost Claudio. Not sure what happened there. No, no, there he is. That, that was me. That's for me. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> He's back. My fault. Wrong button. Wrong button. Sorry. Uh, that's great. Do you want to run through one more use case? Yeah. How about the authorization code? Authorization code is it's cool because you know we're going to to uh, to do with uh, HTTP redirects. Like you know we go we try to consume the API, and then the gateway will redirect us to Okta Ident Provider. And then we're going to present our credentials and then we're going to get redirect back to the API gate. It's kind of fun. So again, there's a, the second um, chapter, the second use case um, um, in my document over here describes how to implement the authorization. And then this, you know, the, the first paragraph over here you know, just the, is used for the user authentication processes. So again, client credentials is typically used for um, application authentication, and the authorization code is typically used for uh, user authentication. Yeah. So um, can you go ahead and share your screen again? It looks like we lost your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
So then again, the second, uh, that's the second uh, use case in my document over here. And then I'm just, you know, just a brief uh, comment over here that, you know, addresses user authentication processes instead of, you know, uh, application authentication. So then again, you know, first of all, describing how to create a Yocta application. This time I'm using my second Octa, Octa application just to keep things apart. I created two Octas, Octa applications, one for the, each one of them for each um, Open the Connect grant. So the Octa authorization code is here. I created before, and then again, if you go through my document, it, des it describes how to do it by yourself. You don't, you don't, if you don't have one. And then um, this time, I'm gonna use the uh, the CLI just for fun, just for fun. I'm gonna to uh, to use the CLI to do exactly the same thing I did for the client credentials. So, as I said before, um, everything you can do using the Con Connect GUI, you can you can do using the GUI, of course, and then you can do the CLI. And then, just for fun, I'm going to use the CLI this time. So now, as you can see over here, I'm sending a request to define a new route, just because it could be exactly the same route. Um, but then again, I'm defining a new route and then applying the OpenID Connect again to the second route and then using a specific settings this time. The most important one is the, um, yeah, again, the client ID, client secret, and the issuer. So um, since I'm going to use authorization code, I don't need to define any scope there. I'm going to use the uh, OpenID Connect, the, the standard OIDC scope, the OpenID scope. So um, again, so let's, uh, first of all, let's uh, get our session one more time. Again, as I said before, we have to run this one to, you know, not sure if my, my session, possibly my session, I, uh, I don't have the session anymore. So kind of we're gonna get these next new session Oh, uh, oh, my my session is still valid. So let me close this one. Uh, session connect. So my session is, might be valid. Let's try it. So let's create our route. Using our session. Oh, I need yeah, a little bit more complicated. Let's use the GUI, much easier. So again, let's create another route. This time we're gonna call HTTP beam two, route two. So here's the service, the version. Let's create a new route. Gonna call it HTTP beam route two. We're gonna add this. The path is gonna be HTTP uh, beam two. That's it. Interesting. Uh, now we got a, a interesting scenario. The same service based on the http.bin.org upstream. Now we got two services, two routes exposing exactly the same service. So again, the service can be consumed through these two paths over here. The first one and the second one. So the first one you're going to use for the client credentials. The second one you're going to use for the authorization code grant. And uh, 
So here's the, the route creation. And then again, I'm going to apply the exactly the same plugin for the second time. And then I'm going to set only the three uh, settings, uh, the, the three parameters, the client ID, client secret, and issuer. So again, let's go back to it. Is the second route. I'm going to add the exactly the same plugin, protecting the, exact, the, the, the route with exactly the same plugin. And then the client ID is the client ID. I'm going to copy the second client ID, the client, the client ID we got for the second Okta application. Uh, the client secret. And the issuer. The issuer is here. My issuer. and then go down there and then create it. So now if you go to the second route, you're gonna see exactly the same, another instance of the, the same plugin, Open the Connect plugin, of course, with different settings. And then let's use another browser over here just to keep things apart. I'm going to use Firefox now. So let's let's hit the port 8000 first of all. Localhost port 8000. As expected, I'm getting exactly the same no route. Oops. Exact, getting exactly the same no route match. And then if you try to consume HTTP bin dot, uh, two dot get, we're going to get redirected to Okta this time. That's the fun part. Oops. So kind of that's a fun part. Like, you know, uh, Okta is, first of all, I got redirected to Okta. That's the authorization code in action. And then Okta is uh, complaining about these invalid requests. So the redirect URI hasn't been uh, set for this application. So I got to go back to Okta. As you can see here, the um, the uh, the redirects the the redirects URI allowed. The only cover covers these URI over here. So it's just a matter to I have to edit the setting over here. And include, oops, these one, the gen general setting, and include another URI. And then in my case, will be localhost 8000 HTTP bin, dot two, uh, HTTP bin 2 get, or if you will, another one. That will be enough. So I'm telling Okta now that, you know, hey, uh, you are supposed to um, to accept requests coming from this URI. So this time, if you try to consume the route again, let's close the browse to start over. And localhost 8000, everything's fine slash HTTP bin 2.get. Now Okta is accepting the URI. And then I'm supposed to present my credentials. Again, keep in mind that uh, we are implementing user authentication process. That's why, you know, it's up to the user to present um, his credentials. Oops, not, not, the, not this one. Again. 
And then there you go. Like, you know, what happened here? I try to consume the API. I send a request to the API gateway. The API gateway has got the OpenID Connect enabled to this route, the HTTP2 route. And then, since we don't have any token injected inside of it, the gateway redirects us to the Okta UI in order to, uh, for us to present our credentials. And then we presented our credentials. And then Okta authenticated uh, the user, taking these credentials, of course, and then uh, redirect us back to the API gateway. This time with the authorization code, and then the API gateway completes the grant with uh, requesting the JWT token to the Okta identity provider. So again, that's the uh, JWT issued by Okta this time. Again, if you go to JWT.io and ask for the code, the token, we're gonna see this beautiful token over here. This time, as you can imagine, is a different payload with a different payload in my sub here with my the with my credential here. So that's authorization code is all about. Like you know, again, credit credentials for application authentication, authorization code to uh, use authentication. Questions on this? That's great, thank you. Not seeing any questions in the chat, so uh, that is, oh, Matthew does have a question. Is it doing the off code flow doing, uh, with um, Pixie or no, not? No, not, no, not this time. Uh, we, we're not using uh, Pixie. Um, as a matter of fact, it's part of the roadmap of the product, of the, uh, the plugin to implement Pixie as well. So Great. not this time. I know it's a common, it's, it, it's becoming a common request from our customers. That's why, you know, very, very important to implement it as well. Not just the flow itself, but Pixie in inject inside of it. Great, that's on the roadmap then. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, you know, it's kind of, you know, uh, the Open Connect is a, is a big one, you know, like, you know, uh, to implement all the grants and all mm -hmm. these, you know, nuances, the Open Connect, standard, you know, um, this kind of thing. Yeah, definitely a lot to it. Yeah, it's one of the most, one of the most critical, critical ones we provide, one of the most important ones we provide, as a matter of fact, you know. I don't see a uh, you know mission critical application being implemented without the OpenID Connect based authentication process. Of course, you can inject API keys along the way. You can inject um, I don't know uh, IP security whitelist and blacklist this kind of thing. But then again, you know there will be uh, extra security policies along with the OpenID Connect based authentication processes. That's mm -hmm. the way I see. That makes sense. So do you want to use the rest of the time to go through one more use case? Or um, do you want to just wrap it up a little bit early? Uh, see if any more questions are coming in. Uh, yeah, there's another one. In this case, did the API gate exchange? Exactly, exactly. So kind of, that's the, you know, as a matter of fact, that's the standard. You know, it's not Kong, it's not Okta. The, the authorization code uh, defines the, the grant like this. Like, you know, uh, when we get back to the API gateway, Okta provides the authorization code. That's why the, uh, the, the flow, the grant is called authorization code. And then the API gateway, it's, it's uh, up to the API gateway to go to the identity provider with the authorization code and then get the identity provider I showed you before. So 
that's that's it. if you go to the official standard, uh, you're gonna see the, the the flow description there. That would be the case, like you know, to explore to show you the official documentation for the OpenID Connect plugin. If you go to docs.congechu.com, you're gonna see this doc menu option here. You go to this plugin hub. And then you're gonna see again the, the the extensive list of all plugins, and then the Open the Connect is here. And then you're gonna see the official documentation of the the plugin. Again, implementing you know uh, all the main uh, uh, grants and flows. Opaque, opaque access tokens, refresh tokens, authorization code, credit, you know, uh, the main ones. Um, you know, if you if you come to these uh, OpenID Connect standard, and then you know, start describing all the flows, how to set, you know, similar, you know, of course, that's the official documentation for the plugin. But then you go, I'm using exactly the same settings to implement um, the ones I describe in my document over here. I think we got a, 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 some diagrams in here. Authorization code. Yeah. So here's the diagram over here. So user browser, the API gateway, the identity provider, and the upstream. And then, you know, uh, you present the credentials and then provider validates your credentials, returns back to the, um, the API gateway with the authorization code. And then that will be the case to, uh, to get the identity, the, the, the identity token from the identity provider now. Make sense? So... Yeah, we got for these, uh, we got other pages, very, very important pages, uh, specific for Okta, for instance, we provide a specific pages, you know, exploring uh, specific Okta uh, settings. If you go to documents and look for Okta. You're going to see uh, not just the... Uh, no, uh, the the plugging again, but uh, I, I'd like to show another thing. Open and connect ID with Okta. This is the uh, specific page exploring the how to use the Open ID Connect plugging with Okta. Again, going through um, you know similar settings we done before, um, and that's it. There's another good question here. Um, can you show how somebody from a particular group in Okta can access the API? So limiting limiting an API to somebody in a particular Okta group. Yeah, exactly. That, um, you know, I think you are referring to exactly this exactly the um, the last use case I'm describing it. Like you know, that will be um, this use case. Describing how to leverage, you know, the Okta groups and claims capabilities. You know, I'm defining a group, a Okta group here, a user inside of it. As a matter of fact, I got everything done here. Uh, and this is in the good. document that you shared for this lab, right? Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. The last, the last use case that will be. Um, the case explore exactly the, the, these use cases here. Like, you know, is wouldn't be enough to get a token. You have to have a token, but then the API gate is going to uh, analyze the specific claims inside of it to make sure you, if you are able or not to consume the API. So the use case starts defining a uh, Okta group. 
uh, including a user in there. Signing application, creating a specific claim. In here, I'm testing the token. I'm te no, I'm using the token preview, as a matter of fact, not testing the token, using the token preview just to make sure, you know, I, um, I'm going to get a specific um, uh, claim inside of it. So, for instance, if I am using a, uh, this time I'm using a, uh, an, um, a user which is not in my, con in my Octa group. So that's why um, I don't have the claim inside of it. So if I use another one, I can see the token is going to be issued with this con claim inside of it. So again, that's the token preview using this user over here. And then the token is going to be issued without the claim in there. But if I run the token preview with a second user, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the claim inside of it, and that that's exactly the claim the API gate is try to look for. We'll look for, and uh, you know, and make this make the decision: is this is this consumer is able to consume the the API or not? So that will be the case to analyze the token more precisely if the token's got this con claim inside of it. And then we're going to, again, um, that's the CLI version. I, I got the GUI version up here. You see, oh, just the CLI, just the CLI version. So, um, so that's the, um, the OpenID Connect settings. This time, the most important one. That's the the uh, that's the the most important settings. So now I'm saying that you know the two of them, as a matter of fact. So the the token. First of all, you have to have a token, of course, and then the token should have a, a claim inside of it, named con claim, and this claim should have this value over here, the con group. Um, setting inside of it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be possible to consume the API. Only uh, the tokens with this scope um, inside of it will be able to consume the API. So if you tr if you um, you can again, I'm cho showing how, you know trying to consume the API using the first uh, user. And then I'm going to get this forbidden here because, again, the first user doesn't have a token with the claim, a specific claim in there. And then I'm going to use the second user. This time I'm going to get, uh, and we will be able to consume the API because the token's got the, uh, the specific claim in there. Make sense? Can you show? Uh, can you show how you, someone particular group? Yeah, um, hey Matthew, I'm saying that's the use case you're looking for, I believe. Am I right here? Yeah, that's great. That was the question I um, uh, yeah read out earlier. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's super helpful. So I think that's all I have, like, you know, the introspection kind of, you know, um, you know, I would say like, you know, not exactly controversial use case, but, you know, some customers, they don't want to implement it because, you know, it's a, I would say like heavy weight uh, grant, like, you know, to, to go to the uh, ident provider, add the API request time, you know, for some customers, they, they really need this kind of validation. Some of the customers, they just, 
uh, looking for, you know, uh, JWT validation, like, you know, validating the signature, that would be more than enough. I would say, like, you know, it really depends on the use case. But, you know, again, that's that's all I have for today. Like, you know, the uh, the document is exploring these four use cases up here. I hope you, you find them uh, helpful, useful for you guys. Please connect if you need anything else, if you, if you have any other questions. Please, that would be my pleasure to move on and to continue with the, with the exciting discussions like this. That's wonderful. Thanks so much. We'll go ahead and wrap it up there then. Um, thanks for coming. Hope you uh, hope you got a chance to work through that. That document um, is available. So if you're watching the replay of this, you can go through the doc yeah. and, and follow along with the exercises as well on your own time. Um, so thanks, Claudio, for coming. Thanks for showing us how sure. all this stuff works. And um, yeah, we will be back here at the top of the hour again for the last session. Um, that will be the session I'm doing on uh, API security and we'll be taking a, uh, I guess, lower level look at sort of the parts of within an access token. And it's a lot of stuff relevant to this session. So we will um, we'll be able to cover a lot of those questions then as well. So uh, with that, I will Thanks so very much, Aaron, for Yeah. And thanks, Claudio, for coming. Thanks so very much, everyone. It was a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you. Have a great day.